Hello everyone and welcome to another ZA4 video tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to create funnel analysis report in Google Analytics 4. Before we go there, make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps to create new content and off we go. So we are going to access our GA4 account. We are going to go on the left and click on explore. And once you go on the left and click on explore, then you're going to go and click on funnel exploration here. So you're going to click on this box, right? So once you click on funnel exploration, you're going to land here on this screen. And let me actually remove everything so I can start from scratch and I can show you how to create a funnel exploration report. So under the tab settings on the second column on the left, you have this basically text that says text. You're going to click on the pen here. Funnels should be probably relevant to events, the actions that people take on your website. Now I'm using the demo account and I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial on how to create a funnel. So you're going to come here and let's say step number one, based on the demo website that we're using, is going to include people that view the promotion. So we're going to give our step number one a name. Then we're going to click on the drop down menu here and we're going to add the condition of the first step. So we're going to say so the first step is relevant to people who took a specific action, meaning an event. And we're going to select the event here that is called view promotion. Next, we're going to click on add a step. And step number two is going to be people that select the promotion. And same drill here, we're going to click on the drop down menu, we're going to click on events, and we are going to select basically this event that is called select promotion. Then we're going to click on other step. Step number three is going to be, let's say, all the users that add to cart. We're going to click again here, and then we're going to select the event that is called add to cart. And then the next step is going to be maybe, let's say, people who begin the checkout. So we're going to click here and we're going to select the event that is relevant to begin checkout. And let's add another step, which is the final step. And this step is relevant to people who buy. I'm just going to call it sale. And we are going to select the event that is relevant to purchase here. So couple of things here when it comes to creating your funnel, right? So from now onwards, all we have to do is click on apply. Before we go there, a couple of things. The steps that you create can be relevant to events, as I did just now. But you can also create steps that are relevant to, let's say, people that visit certain pages. All you have to do is to select instead of, let's say, the event, the page URL or the page path, basically, that is relevant to a certain page. And you can also add multiple conditions. You can say the step number one is people that came to my site, viewed the promotion, or did something else. Or you can select end conditions. View the promotion and, let's say, selected the promotion. That's step number one. So you have here full flexibility in terms of creating your funnel. Then there is this option, is indirectly followed by. What does this mean? So indirectly followed by, meaning I came to the website, I viewed the promotion, Maybe then I navigated to some other pages and then I went back and I selected the promotion. This means that I took step number two. The system is going to count me as a user that proceeded to step number two. If you say indirectly followed. If you say directly followed by, it means that I took these steps in a sequence. For example, I started, let's say, completing a form or going through a funnel. I view the promotion immediately. If we say, let's say, directly directly followed by the user basically took this uh, step, which is selecting a promotion and so forth. So you have here full flexibility on how you want to customize your funnel. So now we're going to click on apply. And here in the middle, the system is going to reward us with two things. First of all, a visual representation of the steps that we included in the funnel. So how many users view the promotion, how many selected it, how many added to cart, how many began checkout, how many bought something. And from there, we also have a table here with very, very useful statistics. For example, users that view the promotion, how many of these people completed this step, meaning they went to the next one and they select the promotion, 
how many abandoned this step, the abandonment rate, how many didn't select a promotion. And then subsequently, same logic here for selecting a promotion, add it to cart, beginning checkout and save. So long story short, you are able to understand where is your funnel leaking? Where is the problem within your funnel? This is the benefit of this report. You can do a couple more cool things here. So the first cool thing you can do is you can add a breakdown. So if you go here all the way on the left, you can break down, let's say, by device. So how you're going to do this is you're going to click the plus symbol and you are going to add the dimension that is called device category. So you're going to check this box and you're going to click on import. Then you're going to take this dimension device category and you're going to drop it under breakdown. And now we have the same table, but the table is broken down in every step in desktop, mobile, and tablet. So you can see actually whether, let's say, the completion rates and the abandonment rates are the same in different environments. Now, other than device breakdown, you can literally break down using any dimension. For example, I can break down by session default channel group, meaning channels. And I can see now, based on my different channels, how are my completion rates and my abandonment rates. And that's extremely useful because you understand which channel is actually giving you quality traffic. Right? So it's really, really cool report and cool breakdowns that you can do here. The last thing that you can do that is super useful is if you scroll all the way up here on top settings, you can click here on standard funnel and you can change to trended funnel. And when you change to trended funnel, you are going to see here a visualization over time. So the dark blue line on the top represents how many people viewed the promotion. And then the next line represents, for example, how many people selected the promotion. Why this is useful? Because let's say you made some changes on the 6th of November. If you did that, you want to see after you made these changes, did the results improve? Yes or no? Meaning, did you see basically you have a higher completion rate that you see these two lines merging together or everything was the same? So this is very useful for UX designers to understand whether the changes that they make actually have an impact on completion rates and abandonment rates. So maybe you change the price or you start a campaign, you want to see if this affects your completion and your abandonment rates. And that's pretty much how you can create a funnel. Very simple and easy. Once again, you click on steps, you customize your funnel based on events or based on pages that people visit or literally whatever else you like to include in your funnel, step by step, the stages that people go through to buy a product or service on your website. And then you can come here and you can get your completion rate, your abandonment rates, and you can add breakdowns so you can become wiser when it comes to your marketing performance. That's it. If you like the video and you learned something new, please like and subscribe. It really helps to create new content. Have a great day in any time zone and see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.